know, you practice a little bit, it feels very easy. I told you, I mean, everybody can do this, but you know, then again, um, almost all of them, I will always go, okay, of course, J. Okay. I'm just saying, always put a J. Okay, so I think you have a good statement of me where you want to have um, several of, you know, you, um, and you just have simple this and you just add, it looks like a stack of it. Sometimes that's appropriate for whatever your text takes it. But again, put some shade here. <laughs> Done. And then when you get fancy, I do things like, well, okay, the last one page is very often yellow, so I just like point to the more orange. That doesn't matter, you know. Just put that here. It doesn't have to be at all. It's not a problem at all. It doesn't go over, it doesn't fill it out properly. Just like this. There are some fancier ones. It can it took me a while, you know, and the, the um, ones that are really fancy, for example, where you go like this and want to have Once you look at it a little bit how it works, it's just a few lines that you can easily do it. Right? But these are again and again just different text containers. Your, your flip charts will always look a little different and with a little bit of a different text container and you're done. Again, shadow around it. Um, what I and like when I when I draw some of the flip charts for we have steps, for example. Again, you know, you, you write them down and you just put, you know, the various steps and then you do it like this. You have three steps in the process. Put a shade on it. Okay, understood. I mean, and then you can have all kinds of stuff in here. Again, shade here, and right on. This is what I hate. You know, this is exactly what I'm talking about. So I can prime my pen properly, I need to refill it. Um, put some shade on it. 
Now, one of the things that if you get fancy, which really is nice, if, you know, if you do it at home, then, you know, for Paris, is um, when you then start using more colors, The easy way is to just get some crayons, these blocks. Again, I would not put too much color on there, but well, you know, sometimes I, I suffer from that still sometimes I do it. Um, and I start just started a while ago because I really noticed that it really improves it when I have when I work a little harder on the flip chart and say, okay, I'll take 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour at home, prepare a nice one, a nice agenda or something like this, then I uh, then I actually use the uh, pastel chalk. Um, it's a little bit more but you can, um, I don't know what, can even have bigger surfaces than also. This whole thing, you know. It's green. Yeah. Of course it was fixed in the first. That's something that I just only recently learned. The artists. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but you can imagine you have text in there. This really, on a big surface, makes it nice. <laughs> and you do that. <laughs> you, I, I have some paper on the side. <laughs> so I can clean my fingers. Yeah, uh, so I think that's the bottom line. It's really text and containers, and the last one that I of course forgot, I always tell everybody, no flip chart without frame itself. Okay. I'm a big fan of always doing this. This is not a must, and a lot of people don't, but I love it. I just, it, it just, it changes immediately, right? And you can, and the network goes fast, even if you just draw it, have an empty one, what I just did, and just draw, draw, and then at the end, before you say, we go on to the next thing, you just get this big thing, it takes 10 seconds, it's always worth it, it's much better. And you take the picture of it and send it out to people, it's a better impression. To me, you know, there are different, you know, when I played with it a little bit, and sometimes you have round, or you can do round corners, or you can have corners like this, you know, you know, whatever you want, you know, play a little bit with it. But basically, you know, what frame it, and I have a couple of these in different colors, so we have sometimes, you know, a dark blue, a dark green, you know, stuff like this. So I have some, some different colors to frame. So always frame your food. I mean, that's, these are the, if I, you know, it's on advice, always use shadow, always frame your text, always frame your flip chart. If you start doing this, your flip charts are already hugely improved, in my opinion. And then you work on from there. Uh, is there anything else I wanted to mention? I have, of course, people. I mean, that's that's the next important thing. You draw teams, you draw a manager, you draw whatever, and it's often people that you draw on. Um, that's much harder, generally. You go, what do I do? You draw a person, and I'm not, you know, again, not the, not the artist. I have no idea how to do it, so um, there's this very simple, there are very many, actually, many simple ways. And the, the most commonly used I call it the uh-oh, the uh-oh, because all you do is a uh-oh, that's all you need for a person. But you turn, you turn the U around, so like this, like this, and you're in the person. Yeah, turn around U and it's an uh -oh. And again, shadow, where with people, I like to work with color a little bit. Often I, you know, keep the same color for the same type. You know, the manager is always blue, maybe, or this or that. And here, I put it inside. You know, it's like, it's off the, you know, the shadow inside. Because it's more round surface, and you can imagine the shadow is perfect. 
easiest. That's the easiest one. Um, you want um, legs, I think you can have the, can add the W. No. O, U, and then you have other legs. If you have things in front or behind each other, always start with front, and then you know, because that takes you know takes away the lines of the back behind. Yeah. You can have different colors. symbols for certain principles or, or ideas or words or whatever. So idea, you know, oh, somebody has an idea, aha. Uh -huh. um, you can, again, you can do letters. It's also a famous one where you say, um, 
is um, you can, that's for idea, that's for idea where you basically have a D, um, right? The idea is often the, the bulb, you know, like this. And if you want to, then you can have, you put a little bit of color, you know, like you're out of orange, and I just go and say, oh, okay, I'm just go with this orange here. Here, I want to have yellow, I can put that on there. And that is the idea. And I would say create your own, pick the right vocabulary. So idea is involved, that's very often the case. I mean, it doesn't have to be, but it could be action. What is, you know, when, when I, when, in retrospective, maybe not so much when I manage with real training, but then at the end of every retrospective, we say we have to have some actions behind so that we do. So what is an action? What would you say? Symbol for action. Camera action. Yeah, definitely. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, I so you draw something like this. Yeah. 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 So you can have this action symbol. Uh, I don't know how it looks. You know, basically, like this. So, words and no, maybe that. I'd have to look at it again because you know I have at some point. Said, oh, I'm a visual library. What can I do? You know, what does an email look like? What does a date look like? Date, so what calendar dates? You often have that in, in things, you know. So I say, well, a typical calendar looks like this. There's a date. What's the day? 17 or whatever. 17. So like this. You have this. So you have a date. Huh? Or when you want to talk about time, for example, or agenda or something like this, you just draw a clock and the easiest one that I know to do for me that's obvious, I mean, it's literally like this, you know, and then you have a couple of dots, but sometimes it helps to have this little thing around it and it's obviously time, referring to some other time. And so what you need to do is you just develop your own visual library you know, things where you say, okay, whenever I draw a date, I do it this way, whenever I draw a time there, action here, idea here, and there are others, you know, that need again and again, it will come up to what could I, how could I symbolize this? And you just come up with your own library. One question. So if I would do this, I think I'm very attractive, but if I only have, I need a shopping list from you for the pants. <laughs> <laughs> I took me one hour the first time, the next time, half an hour, and then 10 minutes. So by the time you do it the third time, you'll do it just as well as I have. I was thinking about paper. I mean, uh, it gets cons consumed, right? But there's a kind of plastic kind of thing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. You, can, uh, kind of you can do that. But I haven't used that. But you can do that, of course. But it's also, what you can do is, you know, you need my left here, that's um, some of the. What you can do is buy a little book like this, a moleskin or something like this, or for sketching. And then there are pens that are just smaller, but the same type, you know? It's just, a, you can use them just as well and work with them. And try it out in this book, and here, see? This is my book for my little library, my little visual library that I start, you know, I say, okay, this is my visual library, and there I have my little things here, idea, question mark, uh, I don't understand, um, action to do like this here, and that. I don't remember how I do it with this. And, you know, here's a meeting, here's a one on one, you know, and, and those things I just start drawing, and sometimes it didn't work. Telephone, I could, had a hard time coming up with something, it took me a while, you know, and stuff like this, you know. But all you need to do is just do this, you know, and sit down and draw a little bit, and, you know, one book like this, you can rip out a page if it didn't work, and you're done. And you can do it with a smaller pen, and then once you're comfortable with it, then you go, go big. But this plastic, I know, it exists, it's just like this. Somebody mentioned those yesterday, he said, the post is the statics. Because the white point is the static. Um, the problem with this is that it smears. You know, they're, they're, they're not paper and they don't suck up the ink, the ink stays on top. And there's a few pens that do that properly, yeah, but they're really like the poisonous variety. And I don't know if they always smell, but they're really, I don't know if you get all this, all these colors and everything. If you can get all of this with these pens that really don't smear, because those I know, they don't 
here they sleep wonderfully, but they're water based. All, all of them are water based, except for this one. They actually almost smear it. So this is the one that's kind of for everything that you outlined where you might have something on top. Yeah? So if I make this black and then I have this blue one, I need to use this pen that is um, <coughs> um, that doesn't mess up my blue pen. Otherwise my blue pen gets smeared with some black in it. So my here with the yellow is the worst. You know, then all of a sudden the yellow is dirty because the black comes off. This this pen takes care of that, it doesn't do that. If I use a normal black, black pen, this one for example, the fat one. Then I would um, um, have the color next to the gray or so, and I touch it a little bit. It, it, it sucks up some of the black and it messes it up and smears. So these outlines they are very hard. They're relatively permanent. They are not quite as strong, but they wouldn't work on this plastic. So I'm not sure if it, it's, a, it's a good idea. Okay. Right. The last thing that I could do is I mean I have a couple of photos of. Commitment 3 O's flip charts that I've done, and I can show them if you're interested. Yeah. Yeah. And then you just 